So in lab two, you are going to be looking at the microscope. So the microscopes that we have at CLC are what are called parfocal and par-centered. Basically that the lenses in that microscope are comparative to each other, right? They're proportional to one another. And that makes them pretty easy to focus because of that. So before we start talking about the, the what you actually see underneath the microscope, let's talk a little bit about total magnification. So the point of a microscope is to magnify what we are looking at so that we can see it more clearly, right? So on our microscopes, there are two different types of lenses that are going to magnify what we see. So we have what are called ocular lenses and uh, objective lenses. So the ocular lenses are the ones that we look through, right? Those are the ones that you can adjust to your eyes. And in our lab, the scopes that we have, these are a 10x magnification. So those are going to magnify what we are seeing on the slide by 10 times what our, our naked eye would see. Now the objective lenses are the ones that we can change. These are the ones that can be used to magnify even more. And on the scopes we have in the lab, there are four of them. I'm sorry, we have three of them, I guess, on the ones that we'll use. The first one is called scanning power. This is a 4X, so that will magnify our object by four times what we see with the naked eye. We have a 10X magnification, which is called low power. And then we have a 40X, which is our high power. Uh, in some labs, you will see that there's a fourth lens that is called the oil objective lens. This one's 100X. So if you were to just look through the scanning power lens, it would magnify by 4X. However, we're not just looking through the 4X, we're looking through both of them. So we are going to be looking through the oculus first with a 10X, and then we're going to be looking through the 4X, right? That's how light is going to pass through. So if we want to talk about how to calculate total magnification, right? How, what is the power that we are actually seeing underneath the scope? All we have to do is simply multiply what we are looking through first times what we are looking through second. So we're gonna multiply that in our lab by 10X, right? Because that's our objective. So this is your ocular lenses. And you're gonna multiply that, I'll use a little dot to do that, um, times the power of our objective lens. So if we wanna find the total magnification, of our 4x lens, we will take 10x times 4x. All right, it's as simple as that. So that will give us a 40x magnification. So we do the same for the scanning power and the high power. We just multiply times 10. So 10 times 10 is 100x for our low power and 40 times 10 for 400 for our high power. So we're gonna use that information to talk a little bit about our field of view. So the field of view is the amount of space that you see when you look in the microscope, right? So for most of us, when we look through the scope, whether it's on an internet program or in the lab, you will see a circle. All right, this circle is what we call the field of view, right? How much space is underneath um, the light through the lenses that we can see? So the easiest way for us to keep track of the field of view, in all honesty, is to think about the diameter, right? So end to end through the middle of our field of view. Now for our purposes underneath the microscope, for the most part, we're going to be looking at millimeters, right? That'll be the unit of measurement that we use. However, we will talk a little bit about what are called micrometers. It's like a little U or what are sometimes read as micrometers. These are um, that measurements that are in our metric system that are a thousand times different than each other, right? So a micrometer is a thousand times smaller than a millimeter. So when we use some of our higher objectives with more magnification, we need to use the uh, micrometers versus using millimeters. So one of the benefits of our microscopes being parfocal then par-centered is that the 4X is proportional to the 10X, which is proportional to the 40X. So when we look at the 
measurement of the diameter, um, in lab, we can actually measure only one of these with the stage micrometer or the mini ruler that we have because the other ones are just not accurate. We can't measure 4x with this teeny tiny little ruler and the ruler is too big to measure 40x. So what we're going to do is actually measure the middle one. We're going to measure 10x and we're going to use that measurement to actually calculate the other, which is the purpose of this video. So in your lab book, you will see this really large equation that kind of spells out everything. And what it is, is basically a, an expanded version of this equation that you've probably seen before if you're taking chemistry classes or physics classes. It's basically just a proportion equation where m1 times d1 will equal m2 times d2. So this is a proportion. So what we're going to be using the m for is magnification and the d will be for our diameter. Right? So the m1 M1 is going to be the field of view. I'm sorry, I'm doing this backwards. Boop, boop. This is going to be the total magnification at 10x. And then our diameter, D1, will be the field of view diameter at 10x. And then the other side will be equal to whatever we want to find, all right? So if we want to find the 4x first, then the M will stand for the total magnification at 4x, and the D will stand for the field of view diameter at 4x. So like I said, we're gonna measure this, okay? We're gonna measure very specifically this field of view value for 10x. So in the lab, you will see you know, the micrometer and you will actually count this. Now I'm just gonna give you a value here. All right, I'm gonna make this up. This is not what our microscopes do. So I'm gonna say that our field of view at 10x is 2.4 millimeters. That 2.4 millimeters is what we're gonna be able to use to solve for our unknown, right? Which is gonna be our field of view at 4x. So this is our unknown value. So we're gonna set up the math, all right? Very simple little algebra equation. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what our total magnification at 10x is, right? So we just did that, right? What's our total magnification at 10x? It's 10 times 10. So this is 100x times, I'll use the parentheses for that, the value that we just measured, so the 2.4 millimeters, and we're gonna set that equal to the other side. Now we don't know what our field of view is at 4x, right? That is our unknown. But we do know what the magnification is at 4x, right? We just figured that out actually over here, right? So that is 40x. And we're gonna multiply that times our unknown. Now, whenever I'm doing magnification powers with the microscope, I always use my unknown variable as a Y instead of an X, because X is confusing when we already have so many X's. So basically what we then have to do is just solve for Y, All right? So there are tons of different ways to do this. Um, for me, it is easier to just, um, follow those algebra skills I learned in the third grade. Uh, if we are multiplying by something, we can get rid of it by dividing, right? So then if we divide by one side, we have to divide by the other. That will cross out our 40x, which will give us our y on this side. So then 100 times 2.4 divided by 40 is six. So this is our field of view at 4x. Now we can also do the same thing for 4dx, right? So if we change our field of view here from 4x to 40x, all right, then we can do the same thing. So the left side of the equation stays exactly the same. 100x times 2.4 millimeters for that measurement we had but the right side will change a little bit, right? Instead of being 40x, we now need the total magnification right, of 40x instead of 4x. So that will be 40 times 10, which means that is 400x, again, being multiplied by y. 
So again, same thing, 400x, right? Divide both sides, get everything on all of your numbers on one side. And what happens here is we get a y of 0 0.6 millimeters. So this is equal to the field of view at 40x. Now the other thing you can do with this is you can convert your millimeters to micrometers. So remember I said earlier that there's a 1000 degree difference, right? So one millimeter is equal to 1000 micrometers. That's an UM. So to convert millimeters to micrometers, we just have to multiply times a thousand, right? So if you take 0.6 times a thousand, you will get 600 micrometers, um, which is again, the same, same value, it's just a different unit that we're using. And if we take six times a thousand, then you get 6,000 micrometers. So that is actually measuring this red line that's through the circus circle of our field of view. And we can use that to estimate how large the objects underneath the microscope are that we're using.